We have Tim Ord on. Tim, can you hear me? Yep, I sure can. Can you hear me? I can hear you. How are you doing? Good. How are you doing? I- I'm doing well. Oh. All rested from the uh, from the holidays. It's very good. So, um, what are we uh, taking a look at today, Tim? All right. Uh, I-, I sent you some charts. I assume you got them. I got them. Yes. All right. Uh, let's take a take a look at. We'll start with chart one. Perfect. And um, anyhow, the, the bottom window is the uh, daily SPX. The next higher window is the uh, SPX fix ratio, and the top window is the VIX. And what I want to point out, um, so when the, the S&Ps were going higher into, I think, the December 28th or 29th high, and the S&Ps were making higher highs, uh, that we're in the current time frame right now, and that's what's shaded in, uh, and basically shaded in pink there. Mm. Uh, those are the divergence times that I wanted to point out. But when the SPs are making higher highs in that ratio, which is a SPX VIX ratio, is the middle windows makes lower highs, you get a short term divergence. Now you can look at there's bigger divergence, smaller divergence. This is just a small divergence, and it can, and it can mean just a sideways market or, um, even a pullback, but usually not a major sign on the bigger time frames. But also, as the market pulls back, you want to look how deep that ratio goes. Uh, if you notice on today, we're, we're basically matching the uh, the uh, December twentieth low, which is the previous low we had here, and the SPs pretty much matching that low. If you notice, the SPX VIX ratio made a lower low. So now it's making lower highs and lower lows. I see. And, and that's, a, that's a pretty uh, decent divergence. And that's saying these divergences can actually last a while. Uh, so it doesn't mean we have already seen the top. But um, I still think on a short-term basis we are going to go back up one more time, possibly hit a new short-term high. And that will be the time uh, to look for a short position, but not now. Uh, at least for my work, could be wrong, but uh, I think there is a, a good chance on a short-term basis uh, we're going to bounce up here, probably starting, if not today, tomorrow, and probably run into next week. And how high that rally goes uh, could set up the next sell signal. Uh, so, but on a short-term basis here, I uh, also want to point out, last week, uh, I think it was last week, uh, we're up five days in a row going into uh, December 29th or, or 28th, wherever that last high was. If the market's up five days in a row, normally 83% of the time the market will be higher within five days. Uh, so we're down, uh, right now, we're down four days in a row. Right. So uh, tomorrow's fifth day. Can we make new highs tomorrow? Probably not. But that's also another sign if we don't hit a new high within five days. Uh, but I still think we'll get a rally because that five days up here is usually never the, the final high. Usually you get some sort of attempt at least to go back up and mash the high. So I still think there's a rally in front of us. But um, the, the next step is, is going to be pretty important. So anyhow, that's the short-term picture. So the short-term picture, probably a short-term bounce that could lead to a sell signal. So... What's that mean on a bigger time frame? So let's flip to chart two. We have it up. All right, uh, chart two. Um, this is a weekly chart, so you really can't see the the little negative divergence on the daily charts. The same same chart, or it's the same uh, the same technical analysis, I guess, is here. The bottom window is the weekly SPX VIX ratio, and the middle window is the uh, SPX. I didn't. I didn't use the SPY, but this is on weekly time frames. And the, and the divergences work the same way. As the SPs go higher, you want that ratio, the SPX VIX ratio, go higher. And that's what's happening here. Uh, so we, on December rally, we broke above the July high. And if you look at the SPX VIX ratio, we did uh, that. Uh, we did break above the previous high. So that's all bullish on the weekly time frames. Uh, but on a shorter time frames, you know, in chart one, you know, we could see some up and down. Uh, probably what I'm thinking, probably a rally maybe later this week, tomorrow or something, or the first part of next week. And we may hit a high or may not hit a new high. But ultimately, I think the pullback will take us back to 4,600, which is uh, basically the uh, high we had back in 
uh, late July. And I think that's probably going to find support and from there back up. So nothing real significant. Normally, uh, just a, probably a consolidation of some sort. Um, maybe over the next couple of weeks, uh, Maybe possibly end a month in. I, I don't know. It, it doesn't look like anything really serious on the bigger time frame is going on here. Uh, but uh, let's, let's, let's flip to uh, chart three real quick. All right. Here we got chart three up. All right. Chart three is, is kind of the, the bottom window is the SVX ratio again. And I'm just showing you that the, S, the ratio is making higher highs. And uh, you notice. This is uh, the monthly, I believe. Um, yeah, it's a monthly SPX bricks ratio. Now, this, let's see, this chart goes back all the way back to the top we had back in 2022, late December. And if you notice, we haven't hit that, the SPX has not touched that high yet back in December 2022. Uh, it's a little bit lower. That high was uh, forty-eight something, and we haven't quite hit that yet. Just a little bit shy of it. But if you go down to the bottom window, the ratio has already made higher highs. So at some point, we're going to break above the December twenty-second high. And uh, so I'm, I'm thinking we're probably pulling back to forty-six hundred. And with the bigger time frames, the monthly ratios showing a bullish configuration. That forty-six hundred is probably going to be support. And at some point, we're going to start breaking above the uh, December 2022 high. How high is high? Well, I'm thinking what the pattern that's forming here on the monthly chart is the head and shoulders bottom, where the October, see, right. no, it looks, it looks like July is the uh, head, and this head and shoulders potential pattern has an upside target around 5,700. So ultimately, I think we'll hit that maybe this year, you know, probably later on the year. But if you notice that neckline, I've drawn there uh, is at 4,600, and that's uh, pretty close. I think we'll pull back there to to get uh, to go. I hear the music. Awesome, so. yeah, yeah. Tim, stay tuned uh, or stay that right there. We'll be back. Uh, interested to look at the other charts. We have I think about three more as well. Um, folks, stay right there. Uh, Self and Tim Ord will be right back. Welcome back, folks. This is Jacob Shoot filling for Tom O'Brien. We are with Tim Ord of the Ord Oracle. Tim, are you still with us? I sure am. I'm right here. Awesome. So, um, so yeah, we're still on chart uh, three, right? Go ahead. We're still on chart three? Uh, well, you know, I just point chart three. The bigger pattern is bullish. Uh, the right. weeklies look okay. The dailies are kind of uh, not real bearish, but probably a consolidation in January is what it's starting to look like. So uh, that's kind of sums up the first three charts. So let's, let's flip to chart four. All right, let's get this going here. I have chart four up. All right, uh, the middle window is the monthly HUI gold index, and uh, it's, it's the ratio. And uh, this ratio, uh, in a nutshell, when the ratio is rising, is bullish. Uh, it's bullish, and when it's declining, what what happens when the gold stocks are outperforming gold? Gold and gold stocks are in an uptrend. When gold is outperforming uh, the gold stocks, usually the market's in a downtrend. And so all this is is the ratio, uh, and I use a Bollinger band on it, and. Uh, the blue lines are when the Bollinger Bands, or when the, that ratio closes above the mid Bollinger Band. The red lines are when uh, the line closes, or the, the index closes, or the HUI gold index closes below the mid Bollinger Band. So back in 2011, high went bearish, never turned bullish until 2016. That stayed bullish for about a year, went bearish again for about. A, a, maybe two years bullish again in in uh, 2019 for a couple of years, and it's basically been bearish since 2021. And that's the red line. <coughs> Excuse me. That's the red line, and since it has not closed above it yet. But what I want to point out here, what's what's really intriguing. Notice the uh, Bollinger bands on this ratio start to squeeze. And uh, that would be the second window up from the bottom. Uh, that's the width of the Bollinger Band. And the, the, the squeezing of the Bollinger Bands suggests at some point the market, uh, you know, if you look there, uh, the, that ratio has been going sideways since about 
mid 2022. So it's been going sideways for almost two years now. Really mm-hmm. hadn't gone up, went up a little bit, went down a little bit. Now it's trying to go back up, but really hadn't gone anywhere. And that's when the Bollinger Band squeeze. And when those Bollinger Band squeeze, it, it suggests at some point you're going to see an impulse wave. An impulse wave is more of a straight line move. So we're going to break out of this sideways consolidation and either go up or down. And it doesn't give you the direction, but most likely it's going to be up because you can only stay down for so long. You know, the market's been going down since 2021. So now you got the Bollinger Band squeezing. And over the last couple of months, this ratio has been going up. So I think at some point we're going to cl- close above the mid Bollinger Band, and that's going to be a longer term buy signal. And these buy signals last at a minimum of a year and can last, you know, three, four years. So how long it's going to last, really don't know. But the second window up uh, uh, from the uh, bottom is uh, where the Bollinger Band is squeezed. I guess the more squeeze it is, the more bigger that move is. Last time we got near this squeeze, came back in, at the 2011 high, not quite to, as low as it's been, or quite as low as it was in 2011, but it's nearing that level. And that predicted, and that that was a major bear market. So this one... You know, in my opinion, it's probably going to be a major bull market. So it's, a, it's something big is, is about to happen. It's not going to be years down the road. Uh, it's probably going to be months down the road, you know, but it's not going to be a whole lot of months down the road. But uh, we're going to break out of this trading range. And if you notice, we go to the top window there. That's the HUY index also. And if you notice, the Bollinger Bands are starting to squeeze together there also. Right, right here. Uh, so... Uh, so we got something that's about to happen, probably within the next six months, maybe even the next three months. I don't know, but uh, something big is 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 going on uh, with the gold market. So uh, has it triggered the buy signal yet? No, but that uh, HUI ratio needs to keep going up to get above that mid Bollinger band. And once that above the mid Bollinger band, I think a lot of steps is going to. Uh, you know, can it be explosive? I don't know. Explosive is the right word for it, but it's, it's going to be meaningful. I'll put it that way. Definitely. Um, and and I see for the other chart you have here as well, and, and this is something I've just been following because I, I think the the movement of it is more extreme compared to gold. Is you, you have silver going on here. So you have like the monthly silver yeah. on chart four. And I think this yeah, is going to be sure. fascinating sure. for everyone. Sure. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Here, I'm pulling it up sure. right now. It's on chart five. Chart, chart five, yeah. Chart five is real interesting. Um, this is the, the silver, uh, silver, silver gold miners. <laughs> Excuse me, let me get a drink here. I think we're both having the same but, thing there, uh, Tim. <laughs> yeah, this is, my throat gets dry. Yeah. Anyhow, this this chart is uh, real interesting too. The the bottom window is the SLV uh, silver ratio, and so this ratio has never been as cheap as it is right now. Mm-hmm. And last time it was this cheap. In other words, when this ratio is down, it's cheap compared to the uh, silver stocks that are cheap compared to the price of silver. And last time it's been this low was back at the 2016 low. And right after that, you know, the market screamed up. It went from basically 17 on SLI uh, up to about 45 or whatever. You know, and it, and it happened within a year. Uh, so cheapness were there uh also the next window up is the bollinger band spread again and so we're as cheap as what uh, the spread as narrow it is going back to uh, 2018 so that also you know the market's going sideways for almost you know year and a half two years on the on sli so silver stocks really just hadn't done anything yet right but if you notice we did close above the mid bollinger band you know, it's back down on it right now. I see. But you, you got the ratio at extremely valuation wise, extremely a good valuation. And you got the, the silver ratio above the mid Bollinger band. And I didn't draw those lines in there because the chart gets too messy. But every time in the past, you got to close above the mid Bollinger band. You had a multi month, if not a multi year rally. Uh, so the, the silver stocks may have already started their rallies, what I'm saying. Right. And we're very early in, in the stages. So uh, that's, uh, I guess, gold hasn't closed above its mid-Bollinger band, but the silver stocks has. So silver 
you also want silver to outperform gold because that's what happens to bull markets. Bull markets, silver performs better than uh, than gold. So silver uh, should be taken off along with silver stocks here, along with uh, the Bollinger Bands uh, squeezing. So uh, we got chart six. Do we got a, one more? We got time? Uh, yes. So we have about, about 20 seconds left. Uh, if you want to stay with us into the next um, segment, you can as well. I'll pull up chart six anyways, but I just wanted to say even, you know, with silver, I mean, seeing that, I mean, it was such like, uh, it hadn't been animated. I'm looking at the silver futures and just to see it kind of bump up to that 26, like, you know, like 35 level, it, it interested me a little bit, right? And I'd like to see silver get more attention as well. And I think kind of right. looking at this, that's actually not a bad forecast for it. But uh, Tim, stay right there and we'll, we'll have you on right after this break. Welcome back, folks. This is Jacob Shoup filling in for Tom O'Brien. We are with Tim Ord of the Ord Oracle. Tim, we are looking at the uh, the GDX right now, huh? Uh, no, let's go back to chart five. Perfect. Uh, so love it. Um, the, so this is a monthly chart. That doesn't mean silver is going to be up next day, but it has gave a, in my opinion, major buy signal probably back in late 2023. And uh, like I said before, these are not really whippy signals. Once they get on a buy signal or a sell signal, they stay there. So I'm thinking this this index, uh, silver uh, silver miners is S I L, uh, has turned up. So I'm thinking they're starting to perform. And actually, I own a couple of silver mines, and uh, they actually have performed pretty well. So this this is a bigger time frame. Uh, this rally, in my opinion, on the silver miners has started already. The bottom. My opinion's in. I guess the worst case scenario, you could test the low one more time, but I don't right. think that's going to happen. So, but there's there's too many good things. Uh, the valuation, which is bottom window, is where you like to see it. You know, rock bottom, and now you got the Bollinger Bands pinching. So something is about to pop. You know, since it's a monthly chart, doesn't mean it's going to pop today, but it could pop. You know, next month, month after. Uh, it's, it'd be my opinion before June. So, but anyhow. Yeah. We can go to chart six now. Right on. Okay, uh, we're looking at chart right. six right now, there, Tim. Yeah, GDX is top window. Uh, here's what I'm thinking is going on. We uh, we had a uh, head. And, this is a weekly chart of GDX. We had a head and shoulders pattern that formed where the October low was the head, the right shoulder formed in the November time frame. You had a sign of strength through the neckline. And uh, it came back to the neckline, tested, went back up, went back down. And what I'm thinking, this sideways movement that's been going on for six weeks, is the right shoulder of a bigger head and shoulders bottom. The reason why I say that is because there's this consolidation. If you look back in, in May, June, July of last year, you had a sideways pattern going on there, um, which I have left SH, that stands for left shoulder. So I'm thinking this is a left shoulder back in that time frame, and we're forming the right shoulder right now. Uh, and this left shoulder and right shoulder, time-wise, are usually pretty close in time. Uh, the left shoulder took about nine weeks to complete. We're in about number six weeks completing right now, so market may uh, stay, I don't know, the word is not stagnant, but the market may trade in a range of 29 to, to 31 range over the next couple of weeks or three weeks. And from there, I think we break above that uh, neckline, which is on this bigger head and shoulders pattern around that 31, 32 area. I got marked there. And uh, so I'm, I'm thinking this is a multi, multi head and shoulders bottomed. We got a second one uh, developing, and we're developing on the right shoulder right now. And since October, if you notice, we're making higher highs, higher lows. Mm -hmm. Uh, over the last since last October, and that's the definition of an uptrend. Uh, so it's been really choppy uh, most of the year, going back all the way to June. And I think that choppiness is probably going to end later, um, probably starting February. A lot of times February have big turns uh, in the market for um, gold, gold stocks. And I think that run could possibly start in February sometime and run all the way in probably October of uh, of this year is what's starting to look like. But it doesn't look like anything real meaningful is going to happen over the next uh, couple, three weeks. I'm, I'm thinking to form the right shoulder uh, of this bigger head and shoulders pattern, it probably is going to remain in a kind of a consolidation phase. So the bigger pattern is bullish. 
Uh, the short term pattern is probably a little bit sideways. Yeah. We have sport around 29, which is a smaller head and shoulders uh, a sport. We may possibly test that one more time. And then the larger one is up around that 31, 32. So um, not a lot to talk about, I think, on short term. SEM is fine on it. There's other indicators that suggest that some of the larger move is also coming on on some of these star or some of these indexes, uh, just like silver, I, I think is starting. So right. it could be a, a really big year for uh, the metals. I'm starting to see. It's what it's starting to look like. No, it's definitely. Probably, and and you know, we've also, I mean, exactly what you're saying here, and we we kind of see it like just a little bit of a sideways movement in gold. You know, I, I look at a lot of the gold equities every day uh, with some of our portfolios and stuff, and um, I mean, anticipating something big, I know a lot of people, at least in the Tiger's Den, are looking forward to that. And we're hoping to, you know, when it just moves sideways, you're just waiting for something to kind of pop with it. So these are awesome charts, Tim, seriously. All right. Uh, yeah, I hope it helps your readers and stuff. And, uh, yeah, it's, uh, absolutely. Sometimes you just got to be patient, wait for these signals to mature. And uh, some you got to act on. But between the two, I guess, silver and gold, silver is probably the one, the first one out of the out of the ranks. If you start seeing that go, it'll probably head up before gold starts heading up because you like to see silver lead the rally, and that's appears right. what's happening here. So, um, you know, I think it was chart what? Is that the previous chart? Yeah, that was the previous five for, Yep, so five for silver. That chart has, has already started to go. So, Love it. Uh, Love it. And, so, folks, listen, if, you know, Tim comes on Tuesdays and Thursdays, if you like what he has to say, we have on uh, Tiffinend.com, you go to services. He has two ones up currently. As six ratios every trader should know, and then the secret signs of market tops. Both of these were fantastic. Um, I really strongly recommend it. Again, that's Tim Ord of the Ord-Oracle.com. Go give him a check out. Tim, thank you so much for coming on today. That, that was enlightening. All right. Well, thank you for having me on. I'll see you guys next Tuesday. Sounds great, Tim. We'll see you Tuesday. Take care now. All right. Mm -hmm. Bye. And again, guys, right over here on services, six secret ratios every trader should know, and then the secret signs of market tops. I love both of these. That is one of the, you know, we usually have these after work, and some people are like, oh, you got to stay longer after work. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter when you get people like Tim Ward. You know, we have Teddy Kekstad on um, earlier last year. Basil just released one for him. These, these things are great. If you're really looking to, like, if you, you know, if you don't know where to start, right, if you want to trade, you're kind of watching our programming, you like kind of being in it with the culture and everything like that, but you're not sure where to start, these are really one of the best things you can start with, okay? You come over here just to services. We have Tom O'Brien's Trade Methodology Webinar Archive, two of Tim's, Teddy Kekshat, two of his. We have Basil, Larry, I mean, everything, guys. You know, you can check out these newsletters. We don't have Tim's newsletter, um, but you know, these, are, these newsletters are all at least 30-day um, money-back guarantee. It's good stuff.